Hey YouTube, it's Steve over at Tower Genius and I hope that this video triggers some of you, literally. So, we see things that are often omitted from cell site leases. Uh, one of the things that is commonly uh, uh, omitted purposely from a cell site lease is um, a trigger point, right? Something that triggers the rent payment, a commencement date or something. Um, a lot of times you'll have a carrier that will propose to have a, uh, a cell site lease and say on your rooftop, it'll be proposed as an option agreement, right? They have an option for like two years, like two one-year options. And if they don't, you know, commence rent payments within those two years, then the, the agreement um, is null and void and uh, it expires, right? And if they, they want to come back to you, they have to negotiate again. Often you'll actually see just a uh, regular, you know, site lease, communication site lease agreement, lease, the land lease agreement, whatever, where they sign a lease with the property owner and it just goes on indefinitely. And uh, I actually saw one of these this morning and it was, it was sad. It was at a church and uh, the carrier AT&T completely took advantage of this uh, church. He had no idea, you know, and the lease was signed years and years and years ago. And uh, at t hasn't done diddly squat on that on that rooftop. And uh, they're, they're taking up space, right? Verizon could use that space. Maybe Dish could use that space. T-Mobile's already up there, right? But um, so you don't want to be in a position like that. You know, you try to figure out, well, how do I get them to commence this lease or throw their tuchuses off the rooftop? Uh, figuratively speaking, of course. So anyway, just something to, to consider. You need to have a trigger for the lease to commence or for the carrier or the tower company to, uh, you know, to, for their lease to expire.